we've grown up like hearing and seeing and hence being conditioned towards persons with disabilities for example can't aspire to having families they can't aspire to having romantic relationships sexual relationships my first first encounters stories with uh, persons with disability and their sexuality it came across to me that most of them the only way they find out about their sexuality is by rape Imagine every time you walked into a health center, you are met with strange looks when you seek for sexual reproductive health services, as if you're lost or confused. This is the reality that persons with disability have to cope with. If you say that a person with disability should not even marry, you cannot marry a person who is not disability, mm -hmm. oh that guy cannot even reproduce, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the time we do give them uh, advice that uh, we are deformed maybe my legs or I cannot speak but mm, my reproductive organs are functioning yes the general population holds the misconception that persons with disability are asexual and do not even need sexual education we've grown up like hearing and seeing and hence being conditioned towards persons with disabilities for example, can't aspire to having families. They can't aspire to having romantic relationships, sexual relationships. Wiwa, a celebrated DJ in Kenyan's entertainment scene, is currently single, but through her peers, she has also experienced the stigma that persons with disability face when it comes to their sexuality and rights. <laughs> Anne Lubisia is visually impaired. Uh, I was not born with the condition. The condition I acquired and it's because I became sick, mm -hmm. cerebral malaria. But even after going to the hospital, I was told that I could just become blind later uh, because the condition is genetic. It's called retinitis pig pigmentosa. As an expectant mother, she dreads going for antenatal clinic because of the discrimination and public slurs that she has to condone with. First, when I, when I went there, they didn't believe that I'm visually impaired. And then when I was going to clinic, it was hard for me to 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 cue the line because you don't know they're saying next person next person you don't know if you are the one who is following and if you tell them that i'm visually impaired i cannot cue it's hard <coughs> for them to understand because you see my sight are very clear mm -hmm. and they don't want to accept that i'm visually impaired and then they see they say that you are a luggage in the in the village why 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 did you why did you become pregnant, yet, yet you don't want to cue as others? We don't want disturbance. Pauline, a caregiver and sister to GJ Wewer, understands the struggles of pregnant mothers with disability. She recounts an experience of negligence by medical staff. A young girl I knew, I had met her once, and then she was, my, she was fascinated with what I do. She loved my work. I'm a fashion designer full time. She loved and she wanted me to do her maternity shoot dress, her gown. And we were talking about it, we were planning it, and then she decided no. I, I think I'll do a mother and child shoot after the baby is here because the baby shower turned out to be a surprise. But then she passed on at the delivery table. And I was devastated. So I, I'm 
wondering, are these hospitals in Kenya, are they equipped enough to handle these cases? When someone is uh, deaf, uh, we are not able to communicate uh, like uh, the other people. So normally, like uh, as we don't have experience, we, we are not uh, we don't have sign, sign language uh, training. So if they are able to write, we communicate through writing. Eh? That will take a lot of time. I give a piece of paper, they write, and I also write. And that, uh, that is the way we communicate. At times, if they are not able to write, we will now incorporate a third party eh? mm, to come and interpret. Maurice, who works with persons with disability community in Madare, says those with hearing impairment suffer the most when seeking sexual and reproductive health services. I cannot say each and every individual is benefiting because we have the deaf and the hospital has no sign language interpreter. Mm. So how can you express yourself to a doctor who has no... Who does not know no sign language. About, uh, the sign language. Persons with disability face more discrimination in the society. Access to sexual and reproductive health service is often withheld or not available for them, particularly accessing different contraceptive methods to help them plan their life. It's a basic need. It's very basic, yes. Because they also want to have sex. If they have the, they have the right to choose whether they they want to have sex, wh whether they want to have children, whether they want to have this number of children or not. Also, they also need have a right to choose. Are they feeling safe with their current partner, so that they so now that they may need to use a condom if they are not feeling safe. They also need to know how to use it, and without being judged. First, when you go to the hospital. You are you are you are you are taken like you are asexual. You don't need to you don't need to prevent yourself because they feel like as as a woman with disability, you are not supposed to give birth because you are asexual. That is the attitude that they have towards us. Sharon is 17 years, and as any teenager, comprehensive sexual education is crucial for her. But in a society that is biased and unfair towards persons with disability, how does she access information? School. Mm. Yeah, school. We usually have, we used to have life skills lessons, mm -hmm. so <clears throat> they'd bring us some um, people to talk to us about those things. Women with disabilities are more vulnerable than their male counterparts to discrimination because of cultural attitudes ingrained in the community that they are not capable to engage in sexual activities. They are Persons with disability, in this, time, in this case women, don't have anyone who looks out for them sexually. Like the family at large is not even concerned about them. Because you see, if there's a man who has a disability, who is a PWD, the community will even find him a wife. Might be older with kids, but they'll find someone for him. The community will go and search someone for him. But in this case, if it's a daughter, they will not gather up together and find someone for her. <laughs> Women and girls are also more prone to sexual abuse. Habiba was sexually assaulted on the streets just across her home while going to the salon. Barbara sai na nyumba na funja funja hii chorchoro ni mbaya. Sai le na enda na tengeleza nyele na enda salon apita njia ya sister uko hivi. Hiyo kijana na furuta na ngufu. Ajo ike meko toto kijana ni ngua ngumu na kunyanga bangi nini hivi mbaya. Healthcare professionals play a significant role in provision 
of sexual and reproductive health services. However, most hospitals are inaccessible to persons with disability. The staff don't understand sign language and they also lack awareness on treating persons with disability. Persons with disability want to be seen as human beings too, with desires and sexual needs like everyone else. They want to have an opportunity to access sexual and reproductive health services and information without feeling stigmatized. First of all, we need education. Education is a right to a person with disability, like any other child, mm. because these are also human beings. Uh, the difference is that uh, work on a deformity, mm. on their different parts of the body, or maybe brain-wise, or maybe they cannot speak, mm. or maybe they have the skin color, doesn't mean that they cannot do anything. These mm. people are human beings. Organizations come up with programs mm. on sexual education and then they, they take young women with disabilities and then they educate them freely without paying anything. It starts with you in general as a person who doesn't mm. have a disability because there, there is your privilege because the privilege is that you know things that to you would just be like this to a person with disabilities it's not just straightforward kama serikali iko zinde this kama ni hospitali kukuwa na mtu ana anashughulikia wale mavu kama ni sign language interpreters ili huyu asaidike kabisa kikamilifu daktari arijue huyu ni nini anataka anaumia wapi On this day, International Day for Persons Living with Disability, I send you love, I give you love to the caregivers. Don't ever get tired. Don't ever lose hope. There is, there is a reward in it, the smiles, the hugs. You know, the, I thank you. They may never come, but deep down you know that you're doing God's work and you're doing it from the heart. Do it from a place of love and all the best. To my PWDs, love you so much. We love you, we, I care so much about you. Your sexual reproductive health is very important and the government, caregivers, everyone, everyone, the whole community should work hard to make sure that you get your own rights, that you have access to information, access to services, access to everything that you need for you to have a healthy, productive sex life. Love matters. Open, honest, sex friendly.